Brian Laws has got some great stories to tell you about Brian Clough. He was a stalwart under the master manager. Also, more about his management career as well. Plenty of insight there. Brian Laws, next. This video is brought to you in association with my good friends at Trent Bridge. Well, Lawsy, fantastic to see you again. Um, let's start with your, your Forest career as a, as a player. How do you look back on the, on the whole thing? Well, well, first of all, Chippers, it's great to see you because, you know, you're so far away now. And we, we've, we've not even spoke for ages, but it's been lovely to see you and, uh, it, and great to have a chat about uh, my Forest days. Of course, Forest was, um, I would say, probably my most productive in my career and certainly my, uh, I would say, the best period of my career uh, in terms of football. And it, it was just an amazing uh, journey that I, that I had and, and, to, and to work with somebody as special as Kofi is, is just an icing on the cake I suppose especially at the time when he was really on, on palm you know he's really at it and being successful but um, everybody wanted to be part of or listen to or, or talk to him or see him uh, or play under him uh, That so that was a real good uh, period for me and uh, I'm just thankful that uh, Somehow I managed to get to Forest. How I got there, I've got no idea. Do you remember the first time you met him or spoke to him? Or I don't know if you spoke to him before moving. Or how did it work? Well, it was strange, really, because when I was at Middlesbrough Football Club at the time, we'd had some uh, really good success, especially the last uh, couple of years I was there, having gone through liquidation uh, and the club we had to reform. Um, and... I got a phone call. It was in my kitchen. I can remember it being in my kitchen. And, uh, uh, you know, the good old times when actually you had a phone and it actually was attached to something. <laughs> it was attached uh, to a wall. Yeah. It was attached to a wall. And I, I remember picking it up and, uh, and, uh, and it, you know, this, um, this person saying he's Brian Clough and uh, he wanted to have a chat with me and I've gone. And... It, at that time, I'd only just about a week earlier had uh, had a like a crank call, which Peter Beagree, uh, who was who gave me a crank call, said he was somebody else and trying to get me saying, you know, it's a manager of Blackburn Rovers and he he, uh, he wanted me to go down and I hook line and sink it. He had it live in the dressing room, <laughs> so I got. So you imagine my cautiousness when I'm picking this phone up and I hear this <laughs> voice, uh, and it's like, you know, it's Brian Clough. Young man is Brian Clough, and I've, I, I, I actually did say, Biggs, piss off. <laughs> and, I put, and I put the phone down, and uh, you know, and I, I just thought it was Biggs again, you know, trying to get me because I thought I caught him out this time. Phone rings again. So anyway, I, I picked it up. I said, Biggs, come on, mate. You've done me once. And he went, who's Biggs? This is Brian Clough. And just all of a sudden, it just went, oh, my God, it is him. <laughs> it really is him. And I, I didn't know. I was like, in, I was just frozen at that moment in time, thinking, well, I don't know what to say now. What do I say? <laughs> and I, just, I was just apologetic. And he said, if you say that one more time, I'm going to put the phone down myself. So I went, <laughs> all right, let's. So he, um, he just said, get yourself down. I want to see you tomorrow and uh, bring your wife and your kids and, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow in my office. So I put the phone down and half of me thinking, hmm, now is Biggs that good? <laughs> Do I actually really travel? Anyway, I had to, I had to, I had to take it. Anyway, I, so I've gone down to Forest and thankfully when I got to the reception, they were expecting me and uh, went into his office and it was lovely to... So obviously meeting him, I was so nervous, I have to say. Uh, in, you know, and in, in the one thing that Cluffy seems to do with most people is is uh, if you if you look nervous or whatever, he'll say something just to calm me down. And he went and he says, Come here, give us a kiss. You know, and it was like, okay, I'm I'm all right now. All right. Uh, anyway, yeah. he sat us down. Um, and I think it was Ron Fenton took my wife out and around the ground, and the kids were following and uh, he just had, he just come out and says, no, serious business. He said, are you a good player or a bad player? And I'm going, well, uh, well I suppose because I'm here, you, you, you're obviously thinking I'm a good player. Went, ah. <laughs> <laughs> he says, let me tell you, son, I've not seen you play. So I'm like thinking, he's winding me up here. Uh, 
a manager that hasn't gone out and seen a player play. I'm thinking, this can't be right. I said, seriously? He went, I haven't seen you play, son. I don't know what you like. Are you a good player or a bad player? I said, well, I think I'm a good player. He says, well, we'll see. We'll see. I still want to sign you, but we'll see. But if you're a good player, you tell everybody I signed you. And if you're a crap player, and I mean crap, Ron Fenton signed you. <laughs> and that was it. And that was it. It was like, I just started laughing. It was great. Um, I just he must started, have I seen was... you play. Surely he saw you play, no? No, he hadn't. I, Not I, I, honestly, right. I, I asked him the question again afterwards, and he said, I, I don't go watching players. Right. So it was like, oh, my God. He, so he, he has no idea what I'm like, really, um, other than the word of, of probably Ron Fenton, who's gone out and, and watched me uh, on a couple of occasions. So probably, in a way, it's probably down to Ron Fenton that's got me to the football club. But actually, that was my interview process that I had to go through with, uh, with Cluffy. And thankfully, um, uh, I signed. And I, I would have signed anything, to be honest. I would have signed any, any, a blank piece of paper. I would have signed it for him just to, to, to actually work with a guy. I guess it shows how much trust he had in his staff, didn't he? In the football people around him, Ronnie Fenton with you, but Peter Taylor until a certain yeah. point before that, he just had ultimate faith in, in the people around him. Well, he, he, listen, he, 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 he signed many players since the time I actually arrived and, and there was obviously more players that came uh, after me. And, uh, and there was many a time he's actually said, oh my God, what have I done here? <laughs> right. Why have I signed? You know, why have I signed you? You know, it, you know, I'm totally embarrassed players. Um, so he, he he'll, he's prepared to actually mop up his mistakes um, or somebody else's mistakes and just get rid of you straight away. As, as John Sheridan, probably one of the one of the best ones that I can remember, recall. John Sheridan coming into the into the dressing room. You know, fantastic player, uh, and I'm sure Cluffy hasn't hadn't even watched him play, but. He's been recommended one of the best passes of the ball uh, I've ever seen, but he wouldn't run around. And Cluffy hated that. He said, you know, you're a good passer of the ball, son, but is there any chance you're actually running around? <laughs> <laughs> John Shem said, well, that's what I do. He went, not my team, you don't. And he's gone. <laughs> that's the thing, wasn't it, with Cluffy? If he, uh, you know, if, if he, inverted commas, signed a dud, or what he perce perceived to be a dud, yeah. He would be able to get rid of them pretty quick. There's a few of those. Yeah, well, well, absolutely. That just shows you he ran the club from top to bottom, so he's, yeah. uh, he could easily easily make those decisions. Not not when most managers in, in the modern day would bring a player in and they have to make it work. Have to, no matter how bad he is. I mean, everybody speaks very fondly of him, but were were players also afraid of him as well? Oh God, yeah. I mean, he, he, the thing is, he, you know, he was never sort of nasty um however you knew when he's you know he, he's speaking even though at, at the time you're thinking this is funny but you never laughed because if you laugh he just he'd kill you you know right. basically he'd, he'd murder you and, and he'd pick on you so it was always a case of um keep the laughter in and don't get eye contact with him because once he makes eye contact with you he can't help it you know um and you, i've been in them situations where i've I've bitten my hands and to stop me from laughing uh, or look at him because you know he's he's terrorizing somebody or criticizing them or or just giving them roasting. And it, there's often a time that you know in a game that a player would get a roasted, irrelevant of the result. The one thing that the players would do is race into the into the into the uh, dressing room just to get a, a spot where you can view and see what's going to happen because you already know. That Clough is going to get to somebody. You knew. It, you knew which player, we were, did you? Oh, we knew exactly which player would get it. And right. you know, we've had some classics. And I remember Lee Chapman getting the best one I've ever. Had. Oh my God, Lee Chapman was the best. Uh, well, the, the best put down I've ever seen in my life. I, I in fact, oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. Just the Man City away. It was just a. You know, we were doing so well in the league and, and Chappie was always getting stick off the gaffer. But more generally, because of the fact that he couldn't trap a bag of cement, it was all, you, you know, you're not bad in the air, son, but you can't, you can't bag, you know, trap a bag of cement. And uh, we were at uh, City away and 
I remember uh, at half, I think it just just after half time, we'd gone, it was nil nil at the time. And uh, Man City used to play a high line, trying to keep you off, offside. And uh, Steve Hodge, who was great at the third man running, uh, he ran on to a, a through ball, clear. I'm talking about clear through, past the set and offs. All he had to do was run towards the goalkeeper. And there was Lee Chapman running behind him, chasing, you know, trying to get up close up to Steve Hodge so he can either be on the side of him so he can maybe get slipped in. But as he was running, he was getting closer and closer to Steve Hodge to a point of which he nudged him off of the ball and took the ball around the goalkeeper and missed. <laughs> and we just and we just knew, we just knew at the time, oh, he's going to get it. He's going to, we all even turned, we all turned around and went, oh my God, he's going to get it. And it was just uh, straight after the final whistle, uh, we all sprinted in off the pitch to get our spot, you know, <laughs> and we'd, ro we'd roll a towel up and put it under our arm and bite on it just to make sure to stop us from laughing. And and Cluffy, there was this just silence for about what seemed like minutes, but I'm sure it was only 30 seconds or so, but it was like, come on, guys, let's just listen. And you could hear a pin drop. And uh, and he just said to, to uh, he stood up on his knees and it, Good old fashioned Cluffy rubbing his knees as he normally did, and and he'd get about five yards away from me, leaning in, and he'd go, "Now then, can you explain to me, son, what you were doing on the pitch?" Crazy. The thing I was going to talk to you about was obviously Stuart Pierce, who got the nickname Psycho, yeah, because um, he was always fairly robust, shall we say, on that that left hand side. Not a lot got past him, but if I were to suggest that that you were Equally as robust, would that be fair comment? Well, I'm nothing like Stuart Pierce. I haven't got the thighs to to, to actually even <laughs> come into that but, category. But, but, but wingers no, wouldn't get past you very often, would they? No, with the ball no, well, anyway. It was quite. It was quite funny. We'd we'd, we'd almost it would be like tennis between me and Pierce. It would be, uh, you know, I'll give him a kick in, and then he'll go over to Pierce's side, and he'll give him a kick, and he'll come back over to me. It's like we were play, playing tennis. You know, he's coming over, back over to you. Uh, so, <laughs> but did yeah. you mind that? Because he got all the kind of attention, didn't he? And all the uh, yeah. celebrity I side mean, I, of it, if you like. Yeah, but I, do you know what? Pierce, he was, uh, he, he just had a manner which, he, you know, the crowd loved him. And he had that stature and, and, he, and he played up to it. He's, you know, he was, he's a master. Uh, he, I thought he was excellent. Um, and it showed great, great leadership as well, you know. And you want, he just wanted them to, the supporters to recognise that he's up for it, he's ready for it, you know, and he wants the fans to be ready with him. And, uh, you know, he wants to take him on a journey. And, you know, when he stands there with his arms open and, you know, it's quite, it's quite, you know, it's quite an awesome sight. And I'm sure every every winger that's played against him went, oh, I think I'll go try Lawsy's side first. Rather <laughs> than play against him. But uh, no, it, yeah, he was a brilliant player, um, you know, and he was like the, he was never shouty or anything like that, you know, in the dressing room. He's pretty quiet, really. He was just a, an assassin. And yeah. uh, he led by example. And, and he, you know, like all great leaders, we're all, we all followed him. I thought he was I thought he was an awesome skipper. And team spirit was always good with Clough, wasn't it? Always from the outside seemed to be good. Back to the, the European days, obviously, they, they achieved great things. But it was a lot of it seemed to be about team spirit and togetherness, and and Clough seemed to really try and engender that and build on that. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, these these teams of success have always been, as you said, uh, have been built around team, team spirit and togetherness. And it's funny that we, as as players, we all sort of went out together, and you know, whether we go for a meal or or, or go out for a few drinks. It wouldn't be a case of us just going home after a game and that's us done. It's we'd actually, mm -hmm. you know, enjoy our, our, each other's company outside of football, and the wives would get together. So it was a real, you know, a real good bonding. I've never experienced anything like it, to be fair. Um, and you know, and Pearcey was probably the uh, the instigator and the organizer of uh, of some of the things that we used to do in any way. Um, so yeah, I think team spirit was massive and and. Cluffy was always encouraging it, always. There is much more to come from Brian Laws in a moment. He'll tell you the John Aldridge story and more about his time as manager of Grimsby 
as well. One thing I do miss about my time in Nottingham is being able to visit Trent Bridge, surely the best cricket ground in the country. Now, whether that's a day of test cricket for England against the world champions New Zealand, a T20 international against India, or the brilliant Vitality Blast 2020 games for Notts Outlaws, witnessing Trent Rockets in the immensely popular new competition, the 100, a relaxing day of county championship action, or the final of the Royal London Cup. There is a huge amount of high quality cricket to look forward to at Trent Bridge from April to September this year. Now I know from talking to people involved at the club, they're expecting a number of sell out crowds and that tickets are already selling at a rapid rate. So I would strongly recommend that you plan your summer and secure your seats at the earliest opportunity. The ticketing site is tickets.trentbridge.co.uk or you can simply type Trent Bridge tickets into your search engine Alternatively, I've put a link in the description of this video that will take you there directly. Of course, I'd like to thank those at Trent Bridge for their support of this channel. We talked about the cup final, and I wonder whether, um, how do you look back on the cup final, given you were, in inverted commas, only a, a substitute in, in the game? Do you look back on that day as, as a great day or as a, as a kind of day you partly missed out on? Um... I have to say it was the, the day itself. Uh, it was the only day that I ever wanted to punch Cluffy. Right. Seriously. Oh, I'd lost it. Um, um, and, you know, it, it, it really hurt actually because, you know, I've been playing all the games prior to it, you know, built up. Yeah, I missed one, one or two because of um, injury. But the majority of the games come through the cup. And he was always loyal with that sort of thing, you know, making sure that the players who played most of the games would play in the final. Um, and I never had any hesitation thinking I wasn't going to play. Uh, and up to the uh, up to the the day before or the the, the evening of the game, um, I still had um, you know my thoughts of, of actually starting. And it was only until we'd done a training, late training session on the, the eve of, of the game. Um, I can't remember where we actually were training, but we were on, on a coach. Uh, we did a, a light session and then Cluffy went over to Stuart Pearce and uh, put this piece of paper in his hand and uh, told Pearcey, um, he whispered in his ear and Pearce has gone on the coach. We're all sitting there. Cluffy's gone in a car somewhere and uh, Pearcey's just turned around and said, right, and he's opened this piece of paper and he says, this is the team for tomorrow. Now, can you imagine we're oh. on the bus? There's no manager. So I'm thinking, is Piercy taking the, you know, Michael here? Anyway, he's got this scrumpled piece of paper and he's opened it up. He's going, this is the starting lineup. And of course, he's lined he, the team and uh, I'm not in it. And I'm going, and I'm looking at Piercy. So obviously, I'm saying a few things to me. He says, if you've got anything to say, go and speak to the gaffer. And uh, and I've gone seriously. This is not a wind up yet. No, he's given me the paper, piece of paper. He's given me the team. That's where it is. Um, so to be told by Piercy is um, that I, you know I was sub, and so I knew I have raging. You can imagine the steam coming up my ears. Like why can't he tell me in front of me or something like that? So I, I've decided right. I've got to chase him. I'm going to find him. Where is he? I hunted him down everywhere. Couldn't find him. Um, really? Nowhere to be seen. Oh, yeah, he was very clever. It's, he knows when uh, there's, uh, he's thrown in a hand grenade. He knows, he knows when to run. And uh, he disappeared. Anyway, I couldn't, for, uh, for the life of me, all that evening, I'm knocking on doors, looking at Ron Fenton. Where is he? Don't know. Don't know where he is. So I, I couldn't get my, my moment where I can actually uh, say something to him. And by that time, you know, it's the next morning, on the, you know, just a few hours away from kickoff, and he's and he turns up. I can't have a ruckus with him then. No. It's not fair on the players. So, in the end, it fizzled out like a like a dud firework. It, it was like I was raging, and I would, would have fought him there and then. I was happy to, to have a, a sling out with him um, the moment I was told. But by the time the you know he disappeared very cleverly. Um, and stayed away from the hotel. And eventually when he come back, well, I, to be fair to the lads, I didn't want to make a, a, a fuss. We, we've got a big, for, for the first cup final, the FA Cup in Cluffy's career as well, there's a chance of winning it. So 
of course I've had to stay calm and I thought right I'm gonna to have to wait until I get back to Nottingham and we'll have a sit down and eventually by that time it just you know it was it was worthless you know you've, you've either got to get in there at the moment it happens or or forget about it and and, and by that time I, it, it melted down to nothing um and that was that was my moment of uh, that everybody would love to have a playing it or starting uh, the game, and I was—I remember being on the bench, and, and I kept nudging him, "Get me on, get me on, <laughs> get me on." Uh, eventually, he put me on for about the last twenty minutes, I think. But uh, yeah, and, and and the fact that we lost the game as well, just uh, awful. Yeah. Why do you think it was that he didn't tell you? Because I—I I can't imagine he was frightened to tell you. I mean, he's not that sort of exactly. character. He isn't that, yeah, I mean, I mean, I know normally the, the team is normally put up on the board in any way, on a piece of paper anyway, um, on a Friday, if it was a Saturday game, it'd be on a Friday. Um, so the, the, I suppose there is no reason for me not to think there's going to be a piece of paper somewhere. But um, mm. the fact that he scrumped up and it was Piercy, Sam to say it in for, on, the, on the team coach with no manager there, it doesn't wash with me that really. I think that's... I don't know what, whether he didn't want to uh, have an argument. I don't know. He's very clever. He, Cluffy was very clever. And, and like I said, he was excellent at throwing a hand grenade in there and getting out of the way and uh, until it all calms down. And by the time it's calmed down, it's nothing. Um, yeah. I wonder so I whether think, he, didn't want, he didn't want to have an argument with you in front of everybody else. But I suppose he could have uh, took you to one side or something, couldn't he? Exactly. I mean, Cluffy... Cluffy, God, he can stand up to anybody. So, mm. and I, and I, I am definitely didn't frighten him whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> in fact, in fact, he probably laugh at me or something like that, and, or belittle me in, in front of everybody. But I don't know. I really don't know to this day um, why he did that. Because it, you know, it's a big game. You know, come yeah. on, man, it's a, it's a big game, and you know, I got all my family, you know, from the northeast. You know, travel down and ex expecting me to watch Uncle play. Brian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I bus loads go down. So yeah, um, but it, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it was, and it, and it turned out, like I said, it was a, an awful uh, uh, way of not um, of not winning the, the actual cup itself. And you can see, even 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 to that moment of which we needed a little bit of support from him. You know, when it got to that bit of extra time. Yeah, and he didn't. He didn't. He didn't Stayed on the bench. bench. Didn't he? Yeah, it was so odd, wasn't it? You know, yeah. it was so odd. Their managers getting, you know, getting in there, and even if he's talking rubbish, it's you know, I'm talking tripe. The fact that Cluffy just went, nah, I'm just going to sit here, and you know, if you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't yeah. be there. Um, but that was that was a bit disarming. So, what was it like going back after the? you know, the, the disappointment of defeat. And it was, you know, it was all billed as Cluffy's day, wasn't it? It was Cluffy's, it was going to be yeah. Cluffy's cup final. Yeah, it was. And in, in like all games that I've played in, and if you've lost a game or, you, you, you know, or things are not going well, the bus is silent. You know, it's pretty silent. So it's a long journey back, isn't it? And, uh, and, and Cluffy wasn't even on the bus. You know, he went back right. uh, with somebody else. So I think, yeah, it, like I said, it was... It was one of those. Unfortunately, would like I'd love to have great memories of that. Unfortunately, yeah. I don't. You know, which is really sad, really sad because it was a fantastic occasion. I have to say, and the build up and of the game, and you know, the, the just it was just an awesome, awesome day. Just a shame that uh, unfortunately, it, it's not in one of my uh, best moments in football. No. Do you think the kind of theory is that had Forrest won that day, Cluffy might have. Kind of gone out on the high. Do you, as a player that was in the dressing room, do you mm. do you go along with that or not? Well, there was obviously talk, wasn't there? There was mm. talk about him, perhaps, and it might be that that might be the one thing that he might have waited for or tried to get because he hadn't achieved it. Uh, he won everything else, and it was the one thing that he probably wanted to do uh, before he quit or, or, or walked out. But uh, in the end, you know it. He went in a sad way, really, which is just, you know, he didn't deserve that. Um, he was such a, I mean, he was, a, you know, even though he's he'd, he'd done that to me, I, I still think he was one of the best managers. I've got. He is the best manager I've ever worked with. And 
and uh, and I, I I can't but thank him uh, for bringing me to the football club and having the best six years of my life. So uh, in that sense, it's uh, you know he's my hero. He's like you know whatever. I'd always forgive him. Mm. Still forgive him now. <laughs> what about towards the end for for you? Because you kind of stayed with Forest after Cluffy had gone, but not for for very long. So what happened towards the end? Yeah, well, as as all footballers will know, is you know, you know, you sort of get a, ve- a feeling that your time's up or it's coming to an end. Even though I did, I just signed actually a three year deal at six months prior to that, and right. um, so that I'm, I'm thinking, well, obviously that you know I'm, I'm going to be here for a while. Um, but then you, you just know that the emergence of Gary Charles was coming through and, and he was pushing, and you're thinking, well, you know. It might be time for uh, Lawsy to move over, um, and I was looking at, at coaching actually because I was getting to that age where, what's next? What's next going to be in my career? You know, uh, I'm always, you I'm always 30, thought, 32, 33. You weren't, yeah, you know, not 36, yeah, but, 37. Yeah, but I, it, when I was 26, I was looking at um, what do I do? Because um, I want to stay in football. It's been always been in my blood, so. Um, you know, I know that a career could end at any moment. So what w- would I like to stay in football? And that was something that I uh, believe was uh, something I wanted to do. So I started taking coaching badges. And I remember uh, going towards the end of my career, I had the I had to go and see Cluffy uh, because uh, I was going to do my A licence, which is a residential uh, course to be a coach, a qualified coach. And... Uh, I knocked on his door and he's, come on in, come in. So I sat down. He says, what do you want? I said, Gaffer, I need, uh, I need to ask you a question. I said, I want to take my coaching badges and uh, I have to go on a, a residential course. It'd be about a week. Uh, can I do it? He went, oh, my God. <laughs> and he just put his hands on and he says, next minute, he's shouting Archie Gemmel in. Archie, Archie. So Archie Gemmel comes into the dressing room. He comes into his room. He says, Archie, have you got a coaching badge? International, Scottish international, aren't you? And uh, Archie's gone, no, Gaffin, I ain't got a coaching badge. Lawsy wants to have a coaching badge. In <laughs> fact, he wants to tell you how to be a coach. <laughs> what do you think of that? And Archie's just tutting away, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, here we go. <laughs> then he shouts Ron Fenton. Uh, uh, no, Ron, Ron Fenton, um, Liam O'Kane. Liam, get in my room. Liam, Irish international. Have you got a coaching badge? No, Gaffer. Lawsy wants to have a coaching badge and he wants to tell you how to coach. I haven't got one. He's going to tell me how to do my job. <laughs> what do you think of that? And I'm going, oh, this is just turning to mush. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> so anyway, he said, get out of my office. You idiot. Anyway, so I've gone out. I've gone on a coaching course. My very first day getting back into the club, Cluffy's walking down the corridor. Lawsy! Lawsy! So I'm thinking, oh, my God, he's going to came here. <laughs> so he's coming to the dressing room. We're all sitting down. And he's gone, now, son, what do I call you now? Do I call you Brian? Or do I call you Coach? <laughs> <laughs> I've gone just call me Brian if you want or anything else um, <laughs> and yes yes I am I have qualified as a coach went, oh that's <laughs> wonderful that's wonderful you're going to tell me how to do my job lads he's going to tell me how to do my job <laughs> well every touch I had of the ball or I made a mistake on a pitch he'd shout on the touch line and you coach coach <laughs> is that what you're going to tell your players is that what you're going to show them Idiot. <laughs> so I had that for about six months. And I mean, I laughed at it. I, I, I took it on the chin. It didn't, you know, didn't bother me. But uh, oh, that's all he could call me was coach. It was everything. And, you know, if, if, things, if things hadn't gone well, what, do you, what would you do, Brian? Oh, sorry, coach. What would you do? <laughs> it's like, I, I, I can't win. You can't no win. No wonder you left. <laughs> I know, I know. But yeah, I mean, to be fair to him, he did say he did explain to them lot in there, the IE, the the FA and the English FA, they know nothing. 
you'll learn more from me than you will from me a lot. And and to be fair to him, of course he's right. Yeah. You know, it's it's like your driving test, isn't it? You've got to t- if you want to be a coach, you've got to go through the, you know, yes and no's and and exactly what they ask you to do. And you know, you can't express yourself. It's only until you get your qualifications that you start finding your own way and your your own path. And but Cluffy hated that. He hated the FA. Right. Yeah. There's much more to come from Brian Laws in a moment, including that much promised John Aldridge story. Need to thank my gold members of Chippers Club. They are Carl Thorne, Tiny Media, Philip Sheldon, Chris Annable, Paul Harrison, Christian Tonnies, Perry, James Sorden, Thomas Newton, Mark German, Alan Francis, David Shelton, Mark Davis, Ez Chowdhury, Paul Metcalf, Tim Hayward, Richard Waterhouse and Ian Russell. If you want to join up for Chippers Club, I'll put a, a link in the description below and it will take you right through. You can choose whether to be bronze, silver or gold, whether you see YouTube ads, you can see the full version and much more as well. Link in the description below. If you want to see these um, uh, videos as podcasts or listen to these videos as podcasts, they are available via my Patreon site, which is also linked in the description below. Let's get back though to Brian Laws. So when you left, and you, you went to Grimsby first, but you, you went on to manage in, in all four divisions at Scunny and Wednesday and Burnley and I yeah. say, all four divisions of the game. Was there ever a point where you, where you kind of looked back on, or maybe even thought, what would Cluffy do here? Oh, God, yeah, you, you, you're trying to pull this out of me now, aren't you? Um, no, I haven't there, got a story there's of there's mine. Many, but... Yes, you know, you know. Um, I never mentioned the, uh, Arno Benetti's name. No, no, of course not. Well, obviously, <laughs> it's well documented, as you will, as you, as you're trying to probe me here. And well, I hadn't saying. thought of it, but it was on the front page of the Sun, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> when you said front it was page. well documented. Oh my God, that moment, that moment of madness. I have to say, um, it was, you know, if I can try and scrunch it all together. Um, it was, uh, yeah, a moment of madness, I have to say. Um, For those that don't you know, know you threw, it seems you threw a plate of chicken wings well, at the star Italian player. Let me just Grimsley. explain. Is that right? Let me just explain. Yeah, let me just explain, <laughs> Lord. Ivana Benetti, Ivana Benetti, um, when I was at Grimsby, you know, Grimsby, Cleethorpes, it's, it, it's one direction in and only one direction out. And, you know, trying to encourage players to come to the football club. We were in the championship at the time, of course, and it was like, we're doing well, we're, in the top five and uh you know punching well above our weight and uh, i got a phone call from an agent who actually it was cluffy had, had links with so and i remembered him from um some of our tours that we'd be on with forest and this agent rang me he said brian i know you you, you know manager and i said yeah yeah he said uh, i've got this player for you if you fancy having a look at him so i said who is it and i said he said uh, ivano benetti I went, I said, I played against him. I said, he's played in Sierra. And he went, yeah, yeah, he's, he's had 10 years there. He, he wants to try in England. I went, do you know exactly where I'm actually managing, by the way? <laughs> yeah. You know, before we actually go any further with this phone call, he went, he said, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, are you sure? It's Grimsby, not Manchester. It's not London. <laughs> Can't attract a player. Uh, like of his calibre, you know, because he would be um, the first Italian into the English Football League, let me tell you. Um, Is that right? Okay. Yeah. And uh, so at the time, this was like uh, an incredible opportunity. So I said, look, you know, I see it. Look, if you can get Ivana Benetti to come to Grimsby, first of all, to even look at Grimsby, then... Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, let's go along with it. He says, well, it's near the sea, isn't it? Well, it's near Cleethorpes. I said, it's near Cleethorpes. Uh, yes, it's so, not Bondi. <laughs> it, no. So, it, you know, um, anyway, I, I put I put the phone down. I thought nothing of it until about three or four days later and I get the phone call. He says, yeah, what, uh, I spoke to him. Oh, no, he said, remembers you and you'd like to come to Grimsby to, um, to have a chat and perhaps uh, uh, come and play for you. So I said, well, okay, uh, I'd like to meet him. Yeah, of course. I said, you know, I noticed that he hasn't played for a, about a month or so. He said, no, no, he hasn't. I said, well, I don't know what his fitness is like. Would he? I'm, I'm thinking, I'm laughing on the end of the phone here. 
would he actually be interested in playing in a reserve game for Grimsby? We were playing Lincoln. <laughs> Lincoln, Lincoln reserves. Lincoln reserves. <laughs> right. So he's gone from Sierra, uh, right, to... And I saw thrown this little little bomb in it. And uh, anyway, a little bit of silence on the phone. He went, um, yeah, I think he might. I'll get back to you. Within an hour, he rings me back. He said, yeah, he's going to play. So I thought, this must be interesting. So when he so he actually arrived in England uh, and he, he got driven down and he, and he got stripped, played in this reserve game. I'd actually mentioned it to the press that we might have a, an Italian that's going to be on trial. Uh, Anyway, we've gone from one man and his dog who normally watches the game to two and a half thousand turned up for a reserve game. So the interest was yeah. phenomenal. And you can imagine for Grimsby, this is like, wow, this is fantastic, isn't it? And uh, so then we, you know, we've had a good chat and then the chairman's like, just could see pound signs thinking, well, the amount of people that were coming, the interest and let's get it done. And so in the end, uh, in the end, I uh, we come to an agreement. We got everything done, and um, he signed. Can't believe it. He signed. Mind you, we've had to put him up in a lodge on the lake, and, you know, trying to make it look like it's Lake Coma. So, you know. <laughs> the Grimsby equivalent. It was a, it was a fishing lake in Cleethorpes. Um, <laughs> so, so anyway, we've, we've he's played, and let me tell you, the fans took to him, and he was doing tricks on the on. You know, Brilliant. He, he stood out. He was a standout player. Uh, just you, you could see his quality. When the, and it, it sort of really got the, the crowds in and it got the buzz and, and it got the, the media attention was incredible. Um, and, and everything, I have to say, went amazing. We were, uh, we were uh, doing really well in the league. And then we got, uh, we got uh, a cup draw away at uh, West Ham. Uh, in the fourth round, and uh, I was going to play. I was because I was still player manager at the time, and uh, we had a, an injury at left back, of which I've done before. So I've gone and played left back. Ivana Benetti's playing left wing. We're combining well. In fact, we're combining. A, somehow scored a goal. Oh, oh, oh yes. The, and there weren't many so, of those. Uh, so we, what many of them was it? <laughs> so anyway, I've scored. I've scored. Uh, I don't think the players wanted to really celebrate with me, like, Ooh, you're the manager, you shouldn't be really, <laughs> you know, celebrating with me. Uh, so we've gone one up. Uh, anyway, 20 minutes to go, we're still one up. And uh, this is massive for the club at West Ham. And uh, Harry, Harry Redknapp was manager at the time. Uh, anyway, they were throwing on everybody. And uh, so I've said to the touchline, get Ivano on and bring a defender on, because we're just getting slaughtered here, you know. Uh, in the end, they broke through and, and uh, we, we drew. But we, when you drew, it, the chairman celebrated, our chairman celebrated more <laughs> for a draw than a, than a win because he knew it's like, oh, there's going to be a few quid here because we're going back to our place. And it got televised. Right. So everybody's buzzing in the dressing room. The chairman's gone down and they've got popping champagne because this is fantastic for the football club to take uh, West, West Ham back to. Uh, to uh, Cleethorpes. And uh, so everything's gone really well. Although Ivana Bernati, not happy. Not happy. His, uh, his agent, interpreter, because he, he spoke very, very little English, uh, he's gone, you disgraced him, you brought him off. And, and I've gone, whoa, just calm down, son. It's all right. Listen, you, we were actually staying down in London because we're playing Luton about three days later. So we'd. We thought we'd stay down and train near near Luton, and uh, I said, you, you, "You're playing the next game." I said, "It's a tactical thing. Don't worry. Everybody gets taken off." Um, but it, it, I just wanted an extra, you know, trying to explain to him. Um, anyway, he's still not happy. We played Luton away, and oh my god, you know when you talk about a player down tools, oh my goodness me, that uh, oh, right. Ivano, he just done. Not interested. He, 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 not interested. He was walking around on the pitch. He, he might as well have gone walking the dog. He, he was, had no interest in the game. He was awful um, and he showed it. And even when they passed the ball to him, he was like bothered. Anyway, and I'm still playing at the time. So, of course, I've got my player's hat on. And then when the game finishes, and we lost the game 2-1. Um, 
and I've got the manager's hat on. And of course, he just imploded in the dressing room, like everything in Italian, of course, it was, it was angry. And he's swinging his arms around. He was like, because it, because it, as far as he was concerned, I've disrespected him, yeah, bringing okay. him off, you know, and uh, and he didn't like it. And he just flung his arms. Well, you can't flay your arms in front of me because I'm going to have to flay mine back. <laughs> and of course, um, <laughs> oops, <laughs> one connects. <laughs> and, uh, and the next minute he's on the floor. And the and the uh, the physio in the dressing room is pulling my leg, like my, sort of short. Gaffer, I think he's broke his cheekbone. <laughs> so I've got. Oh dear. Uh, so, <laughs> Did he say so that course, was disrespecting him? <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean it. Um, yeah, I did. Um, so yeah. So obviously the the uh, the. It, it, interpreter in the time he was in the dressing room he's gone ape and he's swearing and saying you know all sorts of things and anyway um the media he's rang the media of course straight after the game Ivana Bonetti is wearing uh in hospital um he's wearing Grimsby Town pajamas where the hell he got them from I've no idea <laughs> and he and he this like isn't shaping up well for you, Brian. I've got to. Oh, say. It's not shaping up well. So <laughs> I'm drawing. I'm giving you a picture here. Yeah. So I'm seen on on Sky Sports, and there's Ivana Bonetti lying in bed just after the operation, and he's just black and blue, like he'd been hit by a sledgehammer. And I've just gone, oh my god, what is going on here? And the next minute, you know, so I had to have a, uh, an immediate uh, board meeting. I just, with the directors and explain to them and um, and fair play to the players as well. They were excellent, to be fair, because they all seen it all, all, you know, it was their interpretation. They t- explained it to the, di- the directors and, and, the di- and the chairman turned around to me, actually whispered and said to me, good on you. You know, so, you know, I, had, I certainly had the club support at the time. However, from that moment on, I didn't realise uh, the media would be so intrusive. They were, they, uh, I, I remember coming back to Nottingham because I was still living in Nottingham and there was cameras poking out the hedges and they were everywhere. Wow. I couldn't come out of my house. It was horrible. Um, you know, I was just, <laughs> I was camped in. I couldn't get out. Um, You're the manager of Grimsby it, it, Town, it, it with all due respect. Front, like, it, was, it was on the front page of the sun. Can you yeah. work for a man? Can you work for a man? I think it's something like, can you work for a man? Was going, we're going back a long way, but the headline was, can you work for a man who does this to you? You know, and I, I look the absolute pantomime villain yeah. and uh, in all this. And uh, and then when you asked me the question, is there anything that Brian Clough, <laughs> have you taken anything from yes. Brian Clough? What do you think he would have done in that situation? Probably the same. And yeah, I'm that, I was going to say, yeah. That's as much, that's as close as I think I've ever ever come to where uh, something that he would have done because you can't replicate anything else. Um, no, and, and I think you know when I when I look back at that moment, it, you know, in my career, and it's my early managerial career. I thought it was over. I really did, uh, and I had magnificent support from the the LMA. I even had uh, Alex Ferguson call me to say, you know, listen, uh, you don't do anything. Um, you know, things like you know the heat of the moment these things happen in dress rooms he said christ i've done da, 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 da. bro i won't tell you what um yeah. and he said and he said but it never gets out yours has yeah. he says but you do nothing you sit tight he says because you've got the backing of of the managers you've got the backing of the lma and uh and i've also got the backing of the club as well so i, I so I've, i thought okay i'll sit tight because it, it, I, I was always you know writing out my resignation to be fair I thought I had to probably had to do something in that manner, um, but um, thankfully the, I got the, the, the good support. And in the end, really, um, you know, probably doing that is is allowed me to stay in football for. I went on for another twenty years, so yeah, in a way, it could have ruined me. It could have finished me off. Um, thankfully, and you'd have been what thirty five ish at that point, thirty five, thirty six. Yeah, 36, yeah, I was, yeah, 30, 30, yeah. I was only yeah. yeah, I was only I was only in my early thirties. Like I said, it was, I was it, it was my first 
I was one of the youngest managers in the, in the league, um, player manager. It's a horrible thing, by the way, Chippers. Yeah, how I would did, how never. Did you, it didn't sound like, I, I mean, never, from that story, you didn't cope with it well, but how did you generally well, cope with it? <laughs> well, because it, it was in vogue, wasn't it? Bloody Glenn Hoddle's fault. Right. Because he was, remember, player manager of Swindon Town. Swindon, yeah. And he got them promoted. So it's in vogue, isn't it? You know, like, well, we've got to have a, a player manager. So it's the in thing. So I've gone and done that. I mean, I've gone into being player manager at Grimsby and oh, it's horrible. Um, because, it, you know, you, I think it, you'll know me as a player. I just wore my heart on my sleeve and, I, you know, you, you, you get what you see. And, and I always give, a, give everything into, the, into a game. I wouldn't, uh, you know, I kid anybody. I, you know, I might not have the, the skill factors of most players, but I'd, I'd certainly have the determination of trying to win a game. And I, I, I would certainly show that. And then having to transfer that very quickly within seconds to a, to a manager's head and calmness and so forth. That's it's an impossible yeah, that's task. And yeah. It is tough. Um, regular listeners on Radio Nottingham back in the day and on the Facebook lives would know we had this thing going about the John Aldridge story. <laughs> and I don't know whether yeah. is now a yeah, good time to, to ask about that or... Well, uh, yeah. I'm already giving you my life story. Where are you going? <laughs> this was going to be the big finish. <laughs> the big finish. Well, I did, you know. I mean, it's in your book, general, isn't it? The, for, for those that. It is. For, yeah, it is, it is in a book. I haven't said that. It was, um, it was all to do with Hillsborough, wasn't it, really? Mm. Um, yeah. You know, that. And that day, uh, you know, I keep seeing things, you know, on television about, you know, we're now 30 years and it's. It's still as clear in my head as it, as it was then, but it is now. And, you know, seeing, you know, documentaries and dramas about it and, you know, the impact it, it had on people was frightening, uh, frightening. And it, it was one of the most historic days in football that changed football f forever. Um, and being part of that, you know, is, is incredible. Um, and... The way it, in, you know, unfolded, obviously, the horrendous uh, lives that were lost um, it was just short of uh, horrendous for every every member of and family. And you look at the drama that was just only just uh, recent, you know, um, and how, you know, looking at their view of how their, its impact on their lives, you know, of losing their loved ones and, you know, we were just kicking a bloody ball around, you know, it's just doesn't make sense. Um, but there was always this, you know, unfortunate thing that we had to do was, what do we do with the game? Do you replay it? Um, and of course, the the decision was to replay it and we played it at, 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 uh, at Old Trafford. Um, and it was it was a game that what I think... What was that like most, to play? It must have been horrendous. Well, oh, well, you, you know, the, the whole media side of it, everything, the whole nation is really, they're on Liverpool's side at yeah, the end of the day. Yeah, understandable, you know, you can... And it's understandable. Yeah. Um, and, and your heart in, it, in itself is not really in it. You know, you have the, mm. the aggression and all this, you know, wanting to beat the opposition. It just took that little bit of edge off, the, off it. And even Cluffy turned around and said, you know, if, if, if we win it, if we win it, we'll be looked at as the villains, if you know, and you know, the fact that their minds aren't on it, and you know, we can't win. You know, no. our best opportunity was obviously the first game. However, you know, we've got to go and try, you know, play our part and try and try and win the game. Goodness knows if we had a won, I don't I, I, I think what the outcome would have been from that point of view. However, um, you know, the one thing that I, I didn't want to do was to score an own goal at Old Trafford. You know, a uh, ball coming swinging across from the right-hand side and I've swung my old left foot, which is normally my standing foot. And it's, it, you know, rubbish pitch, Old Trafford. You know, <laughs> it took a bobble, did it? it took, yeah. yeah. You know, that one that one bobble and it's hit the <laughs> shin and it's gone in. Uh, and of course, I've just crumbled to the floor and I have gone and, you know, my whole world the last it's the last place i want to do it. it's the last thing i want to do is is call it scoring on goal and of course i feel like dog do do and yeah. um and i've put my head down and i just got this tap on my head 
And do you know what? Do you know what I actually thought at the time? I thought it was Steve Chettle saying, "Come on, you're all right." I thought it was one of our own players, and it was only until I actually stood up and I realised it was Joe, John Aldridge who'd actually the old ruffle of the head, almost like sarcastic. Um, yeah. Which again, you know, I no, of all the times time, as well, it didn't need you know. Yeah, 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 and it, so, um, you know, the realization of what 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 that happened. Then it was um, it was only until afterwards, after the game, when we started talking about it, going, you know, that was bang out of order. Um, and then then we had Liverpool away about three weeks later. It was only a matter of weeks where we had to play in the, in the league. league. Yeah, yeah. So we we're, we're gone to Anfield, and. Uh, and I remember getting off the bus and who's standing in the, in, the, in the corridor waiting for us is John Aldridge. And, uh, and John Aldridge is um, wanting to apologise. He's gone, Brian, I, I, Cluffy has run in between the two of us, pushed him out the way, leave him alone, get out my way, get in here and, and push me in the dressing room. And so he, he's like, so that started to ignite it straight away and then Cluffy pulls me to one side and he said I've never said this to anybody and I will never say it again but if you get sent off I don't mind <laughs> is that right yeah so here's me in the dressing room now he's put a now he's put a hand grenade in my hand doesn't he and so I I've gone out we're on the pitch Aldridge knows I'm after him. Uh, oh, there's going to be a moment. You, you know, kamikaze, I'll go in. Aldridge comes nowhere near our side. You know, he's, <laughs> he's, over, he's over Piercy's side, of all places. <laughs> and, and Piercy wasn't happy about it either. No. So Piercy's given him a right walloping. In the end, he starts playing up, up front. And there was one moment in the game, only one moment, and it's gone on, it's towards the corner flag. And I thought, this is my chance. I even seen the referee go on, turn, he's turned his back and he went, come on, I never go. <laughs> you know, you, you've, you've got a freebie here. And I've run towards the corner and I've gone in two-footed. Holdridge has seen me come in and I've gone straight through <laughs> underneath him. He's jumped up in the air because I've had it caught him. Jesus. And he, he obviously knew. Um, and he's, 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 got, he's, he's gone out of the way. The referee should have booked me. And he just winked at me. And I went, oh, right? my God. So I, the fact that I'm trying to get sent off, the referee's turning on away from me and giving us an old wink. Cluffy said, go on and get one done. I couldn't even get sent off. <laughs> and I, mean, I, I never even managed to get him sent, you know, get sent off. I didn't even get contact with him because he, jumped, he knew I was coming. So every time he was just aware of, he kept looking over his shoulder, waiting for the challenge coming. He just jumped out of the way. But... Um, uh, that that in itself, you know, taught me a lesson. Go bide your time. Yes. You got to bide your time. So um, thankfully, over many years, I have to say, um, I'm now manager of Grimsby. He's manager of Tranmere. And uh, and I sold him Ivana Bonetti, right? And he rang me up and said, Oh, Bonetti's it. Um, he do us great. I said, "Yeah, he's a fantastic player." Couldn't wait to get. I couldn't wait to get shot of him. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't wait to get shot of him, and uh, I sent him to to Trambia, Right, a week later, he rings me. He went, "The players hate him. I think I'm going to have to punch his head in." He's like, "He because he, he's he's a loose cannon, and he, he ruined your dress. He'll ruin your dressing room." And anyway, I said, "I said to John, I went, you remember the FA Cup, mate?" <laughs> I said, that's the payback. And he started laughing. And that was his payback. I said, I've given my, I've, I've given Benetti instead. And that was worse. <laughs> it was worse than a two-footed tackle. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, it's a great memory. Yeah. yeah. But you had, your, you had your, your moment in the sun after all I that, had my which moment. is good. In, yeah, without being the physical side. I've just done it yeah. on another way. Good for you. It's management. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Lawsy. Really appreciate it. Great to catch up once again. Pleasure. Pleasure, Chips. <laughs>